Sebastian, uh, Seb, if you don't mind me calling you that. Of course not. Uh, here on the Yuhi booth. Uh, and uh, you've got some actual new hardware to show, right? Yes. Hi, folks. Welcome to the Yuhi booth. So this year we've got two prototypes coming up. Uh, if I may introduce to you, it's our so far unnamed envelope and a filter, a cascade filter. So these, these two are coming up. That's the hot stuff that we're talking about now. So let's start on the left with, a, with our envelope generator. So we have three channels, like three envelopes. The first one is an expanded envelope that has the usual attack decay sustain release stages and an additional breakpoint and slope. So this one goes back to 80s synths like Cork Poly 800 or Roland Alpha Juno. They, they had the, this extra stage. Um, channel 3 is an attack decay with an adjustable hold phase. And uh, did I say 3? Yes. Okay. Channel 2. Channel 2, exactly. And channel 3 is an attack release which is switchable to ADSR with a fixed sustain levels. Two different options there. Let's look at the, at the jacks. We have the usual gate ins and envelope outs. Uh, we have a, a fourth trigger input, which is a re-trigger input that can re-trigger the first envelope. And we have an additional output, which gives you a logical OR operation of output two and three, meaning that always the maximum of these two envelopes will be put out by this jack, which allows for some very unusual envelopes. Uh, we have three CV inputs, which let you route different CVs to all the faders. So every parameter that has a fader can be CV modulated. And each channel, each envelope also has a, a, velocity. a velocity input, which uh, controls the level of the respective envelope. We've, um, yeah, let me, let me just uh, give you some, some examples. So what we're now hearing is a uh, mutable plats in chord mode. And we're going to be modulating this parameter here, which is the, the inversion of the chord. So, let me... If you look at our envelope, you can follow the different stages. And you will hear that there's two sort of rests. You have the, the sustain, and before the sustain you have the break point. So it goes all the way down. So if I increase the slope, you hear that the, the sustain stage takes some more time to be reached. And of course I can make it very, very short. So with this you can make very subtle and very interesting modulations over time. I think this envelope really shines with, with longer rates. So of can course you can, you can modulate anything with it, but I recommend using, using it as a modulation source for kind of this kind of modulation. Can it loop as well? It can loop, exactly. So right now we have this, uh, this trick. If we pull the first trigger, the, the gate cable, then it goes into loop mode. Of course it skips the sustain stage because there's no gate. But now you can use it as kind of a complex envelope. Oh, nice. Yeah. So let's look at the second channel. Let me turn down the first modulation a bit so you can hear the difference. So now I'm using the second envelope, which is now in loop mode to modulate the timbre of the oscillator. As you can see, the attack phase is changing its rate because I have routed uh, one of Math's channel to CV modulate the attack parameter, so you can now, yeah, well, you can tell, good. Let's look at the third channel, I've routed the AR envelope to the filter, 
So now you're getting this nice and crunchy filter envelope. And um, I, I'd like to uh, mention a very interesting feature for those who are looking into making polyphonic patches in modular because there is going to be a mode where we will be using the first channel polyphonically. So you can use all four trigger inputs and all four envelope outs as uh, polyphonic envelopes, which is pretty rare because it's a, yeah, it's a complex envelope. Yeah, uh, interesting. Yeah. That's, I, think is this, I mean, is this, this is prototype, right? So this is a prototype, so everything like the labeling uh, and some of the interface uh, yeah, it's still preliminary, of course. It uh, doesn't even have a name yet, so it's, it's that fresh. And it, it literally comes out of the, the press, like this prototype is maybe a year, not a year, <laughs> a week old. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, and and, and I, I guess there's no point in me asking how much and when, because that's probably, you don't know that yet. I don't know, I can't tell you about that yet. So okay. uh, I won't ask. Oh, of course, it's, uh, it's all to be decided, and of course we're looking at uh, the usual shortages of parts, so... We are, at the moment, we're concentrating on developing it and implementing the features, and we're still brainstorming and trying to add new features as we go. And uh, yeah, so well, that's the that's the envelope. And as you might have heard, we are already listening to our new filter, which is a repurposed VCA chip. So we're using two ICs that are. Quad VCA, so two quad VCAs, and we're using it as a filter. And this is a pretty unusual design, and it allows for some extreme gain staging um, and and some heavy filter core overdrive. So let me dial in a square wave and give you some some more. This would be like a, a vanilla sound with you quite expected behavior. Not much distortion. Not much distortion yet, but we have two gain stages before the filter. One is the, yeah, let me quickly run, give you a rundown of the interface. The usual knobs, they're pretty self-explanatory. Three audio inputs. Input one has a VCA, which will control the pre-filter gain. Input two uh, has a, a pot of its own, so input one and two have a level control. Input three has fixed level, so you have three audio channels that you can mix before the filter. Then, uh, low pass filter out with switchable uh, characteristics, band pass out, and another third projected output that we're not quite sure, not sure what, it's going to what, is, what it's going to end up exactly. Um, we have two CV inputs to control the, the cutoff frequency. Again, CV1 has its own VCA, so you can modulate the amount of the modulation, the first CV, which is pretty practical. I will show you later how to use it properly. And input, CV input 3 is resonance control, right. which is pretty practical as well. And because we had some VCAs left, because there are so many VCAs on, on, the, IC, on the ICs, we uh, decided to add post-filter VCAs which just will save you uh, the, the need for another VCA. So if you just plug in your favorite envelope, then you pretty much got a finished voice there. Okay, so now let's get back into audio. So now let's, let's add some extra oomph. First, let's bring up the input mixer a bit. And now the core temperature is basically adding drive to the filter core. So as you see as I'm turning the cutoff, here that these overtones are getting richer. And now we're getting to a point where the resonance starts to disappear. So I have to add extra resonance. And now you can hear very unusual sidebands. And as I lower the pitch, There's no modulation on the cutoff right now. Yeah, it's and all the core temperature is only at 50%. 
Yeah, but this might be the sweet spot in this example because as I increase the core temperature, you see at, at a certain point, the resonance disappears and might even cut out. Yeah, so if, as you increase core temperature, you might want to increase resonance as well. You might have to compensate. Okay, now let's add some LFO modulation. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm using uh, the Arturia Keystep mod wheel to increase the um, CV1 amount with the yeah. VCA input. Of course, you can use any CV source you like. Okay, now to show you what uh, what we can make with a simple triangle because this was a square wave let's take a triangle okay so far that's what triangle sounds like and now add some more core temperature control over the input gain. So almost it becomes like a, a low pass gate. It does in a way, exactly. Oh, that's nice. So let me use this opportunity to select the band pass which has a different gain staging. Wow, it reminds me a little bit of what you used to be able to do with the old Sherman filter bank, which had that distortion input to the filter. You get some ridiculous distortion. That's lovely, though. just one triangle wave and all the overtones are added by the filter core drive and the resonance. Now let's add some even more nasty tones and maybe some audio rate modulation. now is bass compensated resonance so if I turn this off it will sound radically different but you can make this this would be more like a well maybe triangle is not a good uh, example for a band pass Let me change back yeah now you can hear and this is the band pass output with a it still is, you know, sometimes in some settings the bandpass doesn't quite sound like a classical bandpass, but there's lots of opportunity to mangle your signal and give it some real edgy... Mmm, some really interesting stuff there. So is this finished? I mean, is it kind of ready to go? No, unfortunately, no, not yet. We're still working on this one as well. 
I think this very prototype came in early this week. So it's all very fresh. And so I can't tell you when it's going to be finished, but we'll, we'll keep optimizing it and implementing new cool features and you know tweaking all these little obviously gain staging is quite tricky with this one and we have to have very very uh, you have a very wide range of signal levels and of course that needs to be like tweaked here and there some scaling might be tweaked here and there but the general feeling the general feel of the filter the sound of the filter itself that is, I I mean, I suppose that is what it is now. and the big news is it's more hardware from UHE, right? It's more hardware from UHE, of course. Stay tuned. <laughs>